Good morning, folks. The earthquake drought at magnitude 7 range finally comes to a close after 125 days. We have a lot to cover today, including sending you off to do more homework, but we're coming right now to 193 angstroms because we've got both dark coronal holes and a bright active region in this wavelength. There has been no solar flaring or eruptive behavior, and in fact, the little active region has now evaporated all of its tiny sunspots below it. Just the magnetic signature of the fields remain disorganized. The coronal holes represent the crossing of Earth by the heliospheric current sheet south to north, which is happening now even before that northern coronal hole is hitting center longitudes. Right now the solar wind is very quiet, which, in terms of the approaching coronal hole stream, means all the better to see you with, my dear. Now, calm telemetry will dramatically show any considerable impact which we do expect over the weekend from the now departing coronal hole on the south, Geomagnetism, same story as interruptions of silence and calm, are quite obvious when they do occur. We're on to seismicity because we saw the first magnitude 7 earthquake since the middle of July. Residents nearby got a fright, but with no deaths reported, we can happily rejoice in not only our forecast model and alert map nailing this one, but once again, QuakeWatch.net forecaster Terrence Allen got it too. He's nailed five seven-pointers since public forecasting began, and you can learn how to do it too. We're off next to Europe, where another Mediterranean soaker is on the way. Over the weekend, it will hit many regions that have already been hit by flooding recently. Venice, parts of Montenegro, Croatia, Austria set to take flash floods as well, making its way to Greece by late Sunday. Eyes open this weekend. And on the longer scale, here's the Weather Company, aka the Weather Channel's winter forecast. While the rest of this month probably is going to endure this jet stream dip, that's going to move on as December approaches, bringing warmer temperatures. But as winter rolls on, we'll see the northeast and then the entire northern half of the country experiencing the harshness of winter. Once winter arrives, it's as much about the polar vortex as it is the jet stream. Let's go to Neptune because it has been discovered that its moons are in resonance. The planets share orbital space but will never hit. Their orbits keep them the exact distance apart from one another and folks, according to the mainstream explanation, this is still a random luck of gravity. I don't think so. Resonance, vibration, energy, we are looking at something else. Alma, up next, revealing massive, dusty, molecular filament structures in space with massive young stars embedded. They say it was the result of the collision between the large and small Magellanic clouds, and they have also run some interesting simulations of the impacting clouds and shown how they think the star formation might have been triggered. Folks, the Bose-Einstein condensate dark matter replacement is gaining ground. While I would prefer it to take a complementary backseat to dust and plasma, we are still seeing it match up against both cold and warm dark matter modeling, this one appearing in the monthly notices of the Royal Astronomical Society. Up next, we're going to let Duke lead the way into climate science to close here. They are showing here something we find critical to know. While every single model that came out suggested that plankton and chlorophyll and krill would collapse under a warmer and more acidic ocean, the opposite has actually happened and been observed. Like all creatures on Earth who get more food around them, they eat. And that's what they are noticing. More uptake of the carbon by the ocean's tiniest and yet most critical rung of the food chain ladder. Folks, there are no less than 18 critical flaws in modern climate change science, and you can hear about a couple of them in a new video by one of our first channel subscribers ever. He almost never does videos in English, so this is a treat, and he is detailing two professors' recent assault on the IPCC. It's worth a look, and if this climate contrarianism is new to you, please know it comes with a 100% hatred for pollution. Helping polluters is not the point here, but... This climate game is already changing at the UN and at top universities, and it's changing in ways that can't be undone. For the full story, where we let the science and data speak for themselves, that's Climate Forcing, one of my top recommendations, and you can watch it at the link below the video. Folks, we greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.